Hello and welcome to Tackleston Primary School. We're in the middle of book week. Come and find out some of the things we are doing. We don't just write stories, we write poems as well. We've got a poem here all about dragons from Carenza. A splendid dragon. I found a splendid dragon in the bathtub. Think it must have come from the seaside because it's wet and blue as the sky and its deep blue scales are sandy. I fed it on many things, tried cabbage, stings on the woofs, steak and lollipops, but it turned away as if to say, I need food you can't provide. It made a nest out of ducks, out of eight of my rubber ducks. It's its own little home in our silent bathroom. If you believed in it, I would come, hurrying to your house to let you share my wonder. But I want instead to see if you yourself will pass this way. We are at the Memorial Garden to witness a debate. Annabelle and Jack decide what they're going to write. Jack, when the teacher gives you a topic, like trees, then how would you write about them? Well, I think of the colours and I try to describe how it looks and what the motion actually is, like when it's, mo when it's swaying in the wind. Then you've got to choose a topic. Like, say our teacher said, right, Annabelle, you can choose your own topic to write about. What do you, how do you think of what to write and what do you write about? Well, I would use something from my imagination and just write it down freely and preferably use good words. And now we have got a fabulous story from Sophie about Ali Baba. I can't wait to hear it. It's one of my favourites. This is the story of Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. One boring autumn's day, a fellow woodcutter called Ali Baba was in the forest when he heard a rustling in the golden leaves. He looked over to see countless robbers with bags of gold, jewels and silver. I, Kasim, however, lived in wealth and plenty. I had a dear wife who was always good to me, and I, being Ali Baba's brother, was always boasting about how much money I had, but it didn't last for long. Ali Baba stood in amazement as the leader of the robbers called out in front of a cliff face, Open sesame! What was the use of that? But then the ground started to shake as the cliff face split in two. The robbers finally left their cave and Ali Baba went in. <coughs> Now something I have not told you is that I was there the whole time. Very sneaky, I know, but it was worth it. So when Ali Baba took his exit, I, slowly but surely, went inside and took a few of everything. <gasps> Ali Baba was obviously at home, so I went to see my beloved wife. She approached me and said that her sister-in-law had visited her and told her Ali Baba, her husband, was richer than me. I stormed over to his house and shouted with the highest, most angriest voice I could manage and said, I will tell everyone you have stolen some treasure. Gladly, my brother led me back to the cliff face and told me the magic words and left. I entered the cavern and grabbed as much treasure as I could. Suddenly, my brain went dead and I forgot the magic words. I heard a large crack and the cavern opened once more. They discovered me and they killed me and cut my body into four pieces. Eee! I came back to give the thieves a fright and to protect my family who always knew I was there. Well that was fun wasn't it Harry? Yes, but that's not all to come. Tomorrow we have got an author coming in and on Thursday we have we are going to make story dens and on Friday it's comic relief. And that's funny how all the teachers are wearing their pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs>